are not as you know evil. They're not nice, but they're not as evil as they're portrayed to be. It's very complex because we know what the mafia started out of. They were you know soldiers who had come back from war and they had no work and they decided to protect businesses from thieves. But eventually, some of them caught onto the idea that if we ourselves would also be the thieves, we could keep ourselves in business by protecting the stores from ourselves. Well, I've, I've been to the town of Corleone in the center of Sicily, and yes. the fields are full of rocks the size of houses. And if I was a farmer there trying to scratch a living, I might well be tempted to turn to crime myself. Or if you were a decent person, you might decide, maybe I should move on elsewhere. And get, thank goodness we have the European Union, which I'm all for. If it wasn't for the European Union, we'd be in big trouble. And I'm sad to see that there's so much Euroscepticism growing throughout Europe, and especially here in the UK, because actually the UK benefits more from the European than they realize. And, and we need the European Union to prevent World War III. I do agree that the European Union has been mismanaged, and it's going in the wrong direction. I also agree that world government is going in the wrong direction. But I believe eventually humanity is going to have world government. But it has to be of the people, by the people, for the people, and not by the elite few. Now, the fact of the matter is that the elite few are are a mixed bag. Some of those very rich, powerful people that we know of in public, because they're not the real people behind the scenes, but the ones in the public uh, view, people like George Soros, are actually, for the most part, good people. And, and they just, you know, they're not perfect and they do certain things, but... Now, I know you've given advice to George Soros, yeah. but how does that allow you to say that he's a good person? I'm not saying that he's not a good person. But how does that allow you to say that he is a good person? Well, actually, I knew his mother very well and, uh, and before I ever met him. And, um, and then I, I, I got to know him a little bit um, throughout the years. Uh, I only met him w once very briefly uh, when I was younger and uh, five times since. But when I first met him, I, I'm, I'm, that's what I meant to say. When I first met him, it was for a very brief moment to get some money for my education. And it was at his mother's request. And I can tell you, his mother told me all about him. And the guy's not perfect. He did a lot of things that I wouldn't have done. But he's certainly not this terrible monstrosity that they portray him to be at all. Not at all. The guy is not, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying he's an angel and he's, he's, you know, he's not, certainly not the Messiah. And sometimes he acts as if he thinks he were. Um, but you know what? He saved us from World War III also because he hired those Soviet scientists who could have ended up doing real damage. Can we talk about free advice again? If you'd like. Because, you, know, you know, all these conspiracy things take off from the philosophical side of me. Okay. You know, I'm out there to help people, and people ask me a lot of questions about life and, and relationships and career problems, and they say, where do you get the well, wisdom? Somebody, I think his name was Mark Plum in Derby, I might have got it wrong, said he's overweight. Can you give him some advice? I'm not a medical doctor, so I, obviously I could, it won't be uh, advice, but I can give you my personal opinion if you want, and that's not advice. I can give you advice about how to get advice on that issue, and that is be sure that you do read as many uh, different opinions on that. Be sure you ask, you know, more than one doctor or what, more than one health specialist that deals with obesity issues. I myself am overweight. My personal opinion is that uh, they, there are a lot of poisons in our foods. Um, I, I was, you know, throughout the years shocked to find out that my own FDA in America, the Food and Drug Administration, allows monosodium glutamate and other things to be in the foods. I, I was shocked. These things are poisons and they harm us, they addict us, and they force us to eat. And I certainly don't, don't like eating all the time, but they do it to us. And I think the best thing you can do is avoid watching images of food or, or smelling food, you know, eating, eating the right healthy foods enough throughout the day, and many times throughout the day, uh, uh, rather than eating one giant meal and then cutting between for a long time is definitely good advice. But that's not advice for me. That's from doctors who gave it to me. So my, my personal opinion is that's good advice. Uh, my advice, for one thing for sure, is stress. Stress avoidance. Now, you've had Lenny uh, Horowitz on here, Leonard Horowitz. Yes, and I he's have. absolutely right that the number one cause of disease is excessive stressful environments that cause a lot of physiological changes in our bodies. I'm over here, John Pierre. Yeah. <laughs> Don't look at the camera, please. So. So stress. Okay. What about this uh, alien thing you were going to talk about? I think in my intro I mentioned this, uh, the philosophy of extraterrestrials. Yeah, I mean, I think that any species that has a technology uh, to do the kind of things that we're observing do not have any material needs. They don't have any poverty. They don't have any need for greed. And they certainly don't want to wipe us out. They would have done it already. I think that uh, once we have achieved that level of wisdom and awareness of the infinite, because, you know, if we think about the infinite, it opens our minds, it makes us deep, and, and, and it makes us logical. And I think if we were more logical, more logical and emotionally uh, healthy, 
I think we'd be a happier species and we would be ready to meet the aliens. The extraterrestrials don't want to meet us right now because we're too primitive. We're just, we're at such a level of thought and we're always competing against each other, hurting each other in the name of all kinds of excuses. And there's really no excuse. No matter what your problem in life is, there's got to be a peaceful, nonviolent way. As Gandhi said, it's, you know, unless things, you know, unless the crap hits the fan, excuse my expression, um, you know, then you have to fight the Nazis and fascists, of course. But I, am, I subscribe to nonviolence. And Gandhi's message of nonviolence is, you know, be the change that you want to see in the world. And basically the idea of, of you know, nonviolence is avoiding unnecessary conflict by understanding that every human being has a right to certain things. I support the United Nations Declaration on Human Rights. Uh, I think it's the most, one of the most wonderful things in the world. And I was very sad to see that Muammar Gaddafi threw that thing down on the floor like that. He obviously doesn't appreciate the value of the United Nations. I do. It's not part of any new world order. That's for sure. Well, somebody asks, I keep contradicting myself. How do I stop? <laughs> um, is he suggesting that I'm contradicting myself? I can't possibly speak for my text or inners, but... Well, if you, if you really are contradicting yourself, then it means that you might possibly have a mental disorder and you need to get some help. Okay. So, uh, you believe in brotherly love mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, that we need to evolve as a species. Yes. And I think that's easy to agree with. I don't think people would disagree with you. Mm -hmm. um, but then, you know, how do we deal with these people, even if it is remnant Nazis or mafiosi or whoever it is? Mm -hmm. You know, how does the human species, here's some advice I'd like, you know, how does the human species evolve from where we are today to a place where the aliens, if they are out there, uh, we'll come and say, welcome, brother, to the Brotherhood of Space or whatever. Easy. First thing we need to do is to stop voting into power people who promise us populist promises like, in my opinion, the Tories are promising stuff they can't deliver. And I, I personally prefer Nick Clegg in, in the UK. I'm, I'm not a UK citizen, so I can't vote here, but I'll tell you this. You, sh you should stop going from one extreme to the other. If you want change, buy some time. You need to buy time. So you need moderates in power. Isn't, uh, you know, excuse me, a lot of people think that they're all the same. You know, the I don't think, I don't, I don't, I don't agree. I don't, I don't agree. There's significant differences between the parties. Uh, even if there are other, you know, on some issues they're not. I definitely think that the Lib Dems uh, are not perfect. And in fact, I prefer the Lib Dems from 30 years ago than they are today. But, um, you know, I love, I love John Cleese's well, commercials. Shooting Remember John, dogs, John Cleese mean. when he was, well, uh, John Cleese was doing ads <laughs> for the campaign for the Lib Dems. It was wonderful. Look, I think this. I think that if you want a better world, you should stop jumping from one extreme to the other and you should go for moderates. And when you have moderates, you buy time. Now, the time you buy allows you to realize that you need, in order to have a better world, you need to have patience. You need to have trust. You need to, to be able to trust your fellow human being. And the only way you're going to trust your fellow human being is if you trust your own self. And you can't trust yourself if you're confused about what's going on in the world. So you need to have a philosophy in life, but a deep one, not a superficial philosophy. And that's what I provide with my infinity consciousness. I think that if we want peace in the world, we need leaders who realize that ethics is not an option. Ethical behavior is necessary. And to have ethics, you have to have a philosophy of the universe, a philosophy that says that, you know what? We don't know what's beyond this life, this physical life that we're in now. We should love each other and be kind to each other as if tomorrow or at any moment we might die. We should stop hating so much. But what if these people don't care? They, they don't care because they're sick. And, and why should I be the victim of mental illness? You know, Woody Allen or somebody said, uh, stop the world, I want to get off. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a crazy place. Um, I really think there's just so many people, you know that experiment, the Milgram experiment, 60% or more people were willing to electric shock. shocks. Yeah. yeah, what does that say? And these are people who normally wouldn't hurt anybody, but because they were brainwashed and, 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 and you know, they were psychologically manipulated with neurolinguistic programming. Jean-Pierre. <laughs> we can talk more about that's this. That's all we've got time for. Thank you to everyone for watching our one-hour show and for those who texted. And thanks to my very special guest, J.P. Fenyo. Next week, we'll be back with yet another exciting show that might even change your life. Until then, remember, they're watching you, watching us, watching them. Cheerio.